All right, uh, welcome back to our third part. In this part, we are going to talk about functions, level sets, and convex sets. All right, so functions are specific or special uh, binary, uh, uh, not binary, I'm sorry, uh, special relations, well, binary relations. Um, we normally define function f from set x into y, all right? And it basically says for any, for any or for every point in x, you have to map that x into a single element in y, all right? So you relate every x to some y, to one y in the set y. So it's a binary relation, a special binary relation. Um, however, some functions, uh, well, we don't call them functions, may map uh, x into a, a, so every element in x to a, a non-empty set, all right? So first of all, what is, so for any, for any given set x, 2 to the power x denotes the set of all subsets of set x, including the empty set. So when, for example, you want to say uh, I would like to uh, talk about all non-empty subsets of set x, well then we basically say, okay, it's 2 to the power x minus uh, a set which has, uh, uh, which has an empty set itself, all right? Um, so therefore, uh, a function, if it maps x to 2 to the power y, for instance, it means for every element, it maps it to a, a non-empty set or maybe an empty set. So we call this not a function, but correspondence. We are going to uh, come across with this term in, in, in game theory, for example. All right, so functions uh, can be continuous or not. So the definition of continuity, the formal definition is, is highly complicated, but it basically means the following. There is going to be no jump. That's it. Uh, an example, a function like this, all right, is a continuous function. There's no jump. It's not differentiable, but it is continuous. However, a function like this, very similar in form, uh, is not continuous because here the function takes values here at this point, x naught, but when you go slightly to its right, it, it takes significantly higher values, all right? So there's a jump in the function. Jump to above or below, doesn't matter. So as long as, if there is any jump, well then we say that function is not continuous, all right? Uh, most of the times we like to use continuous functions because uh, uh, they're easy, easier to work with. So, that's all about the functions. What about level sets? So the idea of level sets is the following. Um, when I have a function, so let's talk about real valued functions. So a function is a real valued function if it maps some set, some set to R. Okay, so it's real valued function. We most of the times are going to deal with functions where x is equal to real set of reals. So r to r, all right? So one example is f of x is equal to uh, 3x squared. You tell me one value of x, I'm going to tell you what's the real number that it is uh, corresponding to. Um, f can be from r square to r. So r square is basically a Cartesian product of r by itself, all right? r cross r. So it's a vector of, of uh, so the element is a tuple. Um, and then, for example, fxy is equal to square root of x plus square root of y, all right? So you tell me a vector, I'm going to tell you a real number that these two numbers correspond to. So in general, it can be from 
r to the power n to r, where n is some number greater than or equal to 1. All right, so all of those are real valid functions. Um, so this is the domain, this is the range. If the range is a set of reals, it's, it's called uh, a, a real valued function. So most of the times uh, we would like to uh, graph or draw the function and understand where the maximum point is, the minimum point is. So if you can draw it, then, well, that's a nice thing, right? I mean, it's like having a map in front of you so you know which path you should be taking or where the location that you are aiming to go. So drawing a function is, is important. The thing is, though, if it is a, 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 a function like f of x equal to square root of x, well, it's, it's, a single, uh, it, it's very easy to draw, right? You have, for example, over the 0, 1 interval, it's going to look something like this, right? Um, well, but if you have a function f of x, y equals uh, x times y square root. Uh, how do I graph this? Well, first of all, when I have one variable function, I need two dimension, right? This is x, this is the f of x. So here is the domain, here is the uh, range. The range is kind of the height of the function. So if I have two variables, well, then I need a three-dimensional space, x, y, and then f of x, y, the height of the, uh, 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 sort of the height of the function. Uh, it's not the uh, right terminology I am using. I'm, I'm sorry for this. So drawing a three-dimensional function is not easy on board, all right? It's not easy to visualize. I have some nice pictures on my lecture notes, so uh, please go and look at them. Um, and if it is, for example, r, uh, r to the power 3 or 4, well, it's impossible to draw them. All right, so what are we going to do then? Uh, at least when, for example, we have two dimension, x and y, what can we do? How can we visualize those, those functions? Well, um, good news, we have level sets for this. So in economics, we use level sets a lot. In consumer theory, for instance, we call them indifference curves. In production theory, we call them isocost, isoquant, etc. So we use them uh, uh, a lot. But in mathematics, uh, they are nothing but uh, level sets. So for any real valued function, Rn to R, a level set is defined as x1 all the way up to xn, so a vector from Rn, because this is the domain, such that f of x1 xn takes the value c. What is c? c is just a real number. Uh, positive, negative, doesn't matter. Right? It's just a real number. So basically, a level set tells me all the points in the domain which corresponds to the same height, C. All right? Again, a level set tells me all the points in the domain that has the same height, C. As you change C, you're going to have a different level, different height. This is why we call them level sets. So different level. And so for each level, uh, well, the set of points on the domain will probably be different, right? Um, so therefore, um, the, this, is, this is a level set of a function f for the level c. All right? Very good. Well, the level sets are widespread. For example, uh, the, the, the temperature maps, the iso, uh, isotherms. Uh, again, I have nice pictures in my lecture notes. You will see the isotherms also use the level sets. Or, for example, if you uh, ever seen topographical maps, uh, basically shows the heights uh, in some 
uh, surrounding. Uh, they are nothing but level sets, all right? Um, so they are widely uh, used. And how do we draw a level set? Well, very simple. So if I have a function like f of x, y equals x times y, well, start with choosing a number c, all right? Let's choose c equals 1, all right? Just randomly I picked. Uh, well, it's an x versus y graph. So I basically need to figure out all the x's and y's when they're multiplied is going to be equal to 1. So one point is x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, right? So this point is on this level set. All right, what else? When, for example, x is equal to 2, well, then y has to be 1 half so that their multiplication is equal to 1. So x is equal to 2, y has to be equal to 1 half. So it's going to correspond to this point. Uh, the symmetric version is x is 1 half, y is 2, right? So something like this. Um, for example, if x is 10, y has to be 1 over 10. All right, so if x is, well, 10 is, let's say, somewhere here, 1 over 10 is here. So basically, once you uh, select few points, you're going to figure out the tendency. Just connect the dots. All right, it can't be a straight line, obviously. Uh, if, you, if it is not obvious to you, you should just pick, you know, some more numbers. So this is what a level curve of this function is going to look like when c is equal to 1. If you increase c, you're going to get a higher uh, level curve. If you decrease c, you're going to get a lower level curve. c can be negative, so you're going to get a negative level curve, etc. All right? Okay, so... Um, it's been already 12 minutes. So let's finish up the convex sets. The convexity is an important property for a set, uh, especially for the optimization uh, uh, problems. Uh, there's a huge literature and an area of research called as convex optimization. So a set X is set convex if for all a b in set x we have t times a plus 1 minus t times b is also an element of x for all t in between 0 1 all right um, okay, so what, what does that mean? Well, first of all, this term, all right, um, by the way, I, I assume that x is, uh, for example, a set of reals, so that I can multiply those real numbers with some constant coefficients and then add them up, or a and b can be vectors, but if they are completely abstract objects, like, for example, tomatoes, apples. So A is a tomato. So what does it mean multiplying tomato with one half? Okay, so you got the idea. So this is uh, T times A plus 1 minus T times B. We call this convex combination of A and B. All right? It's basically a weighted average of these two numbers. If, for example, t is one half, it's the average, the mean. If, if t is, for example, zero, it is basically equivalent to b. If it is one, this is equivalent to a. All right? So as long as, so on a space, I don't know what dimension, but let's say it's a two-dimensional space, x. So if this is b, if this is a, uh, basically, all the points in between A and B are uh, TA plus 1 minus TB for some T. So as you change T, you're going to move along this line. All right, so this is called convex combination of uh, A and B. And the thing is, a set is convex if a sort of a straight line between A and B is within this set. All right, so this is why probably you have seen this a lot. A set like this cannot be convex because 
if point A is here, point B is here, a straight line between A and B is not included. It, I mean, it is in, for some values, you know, the, the, some points are in the set, but some points, for example, this point is not in the set X. So therefore, this can't be a convex set. Um, a perfect circle, all right, with a hole. So uh, this set is also not convex because if my point is A here and if my point B here, when I combine them, some points on this line is not going to be included in my set X. So my set as, so this is sort of a donut like set. So basically convex set means there is no, there are no holes and dents in my set. So it's sort of, a, it has a very smooth surface. It has sort of a very dense, nice interior and, and, and so on. Um, let's move on to some more uh, 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 abstract examples. Uh, consider the set of natural numbers, right? 0, 1, 2, etc. Uh, so, so this is a subset of R, the set of reals. Oh, by the way, I never mentioned this, but the set of natural numbers is a subset of set of uh, integers, which is a subset of set of rational numbers, which is a subset of set of reals, right? Um, so the set of natural numbers, um, which is a subset of reals, is not a convex set, right? Because if I take any two points, for example, A is equal to 1 and B is equal to 2, a convex combination of these two numbers, for example, t is equal to one half. So that means one times one half plus uh, two times uh, one half, which is equal to three over two, meaning 1.5. This is not an element of set of natural numbers. All right. So therefore, the, this is a set which has holes in it. All right. Does, does it make sense? Uh, in, so this is kind of... Uh, also called a discrete set in a sense, all right? And we don't like discreteness in, 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 in our problems because discreteness uh, caused this uh, non-convexity and, and non-convex domains are, are problematic, as I said, because optimization problems becomes very messy in, in such domains. Um, another example would be consider any, any interval. All right, uh, A, B, closed, open, doesn't matter, is, which is a subset of real numbers. Uh, is this a convex set? Yes, it is a convex set. But be careful, union of or intersection of uh, uh, intervals need not to be a, 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 a convex set. For instance, the closed interval 0, 5, union, uh, 7, 8. So this is a union of two closed intervals and this set is non-convex. Why is that? Well, let's say this is the set of reals, right? This goes all the way to minus infinity. This goes all the way to plus infinity. So 0, 5 interval, let's say this is 0, this is 5, this is 7, this is 8. So 0, 5 is this interval right? 7, 8 is this interval. All right. So if I pick my A somewhere here and my B somewhere here and it's convex combination, it may fall in this region for some T values. All right. This definition. So this is why I wanted to go over logic uh, first. But this sentence, please give a few minutes to comprehend it. It says for any two points in this set X, we must have that this convex combination of these two points is an element of this set for every T. All right. So uh, for example, if A is four and B is equal to, well, eight. All right. So the convex combination for T equals one half is six. And six is not included in this uh, union of intervals. 
Hence, this set, although each separate set is a convex set, the union is not necessarily convex.